In this demonstration we look at how to import Landsat data into Envy. So what I've got up on the screen so far is already I've, I've started up Envy and I've opened the folder where I've already extracted the file that I downloaded from the USGS Glovis site. So you would have downloaded the, the FTP uh, via FTP the image um, in, a, in a zipped format so you need to extract that first and you'll see that it extracts as a number of different files. So we've got the, the main data files, which are the large files here, of um, 56,000 kilobytes, and we've got bands 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 being extracted there. And then each of those also can, comes with an auxiliary file that has information associated with the header data there. What you also get when you download is uh, two text files, so one with GCP on the end, which stands for ground control points, and the MTL file, which is the metadata file. Now you can open the MTL file, or, and the GCP file for that matter, in, in WordPad or something similar to that. So I've just opened the, the metadata file to start with, and if we look at the information that's contained within that text document, we see a number of bits and pieces of data that are relevant for any further processing that we may do with our data. So you can scroll down here and have a look at things like the the date and the time of image acquisition, um, information about the, the coordinates associated with the data, and also radiometric information too that we use for radiometric correction and conversion from digital number to at sensor radiance and reflectance values. So there's also some information about the, the data quality and a lot of this information was contained or you would have been able to see when you looked at the metadata um, through the Globus site. So we're just going to go ahead and open that, open this file directly in Envy. And it's quite simple, all we need to do is go to File, Open External File, Landsat and GeoTIFF with metadata. And as we do that, this is automatically defaulting to go to the directory where I have unzipped these files and you, you may need to navigate to the folder yourself or otherwise have a look at setting your preferences so that it's automatically going to the folder where your data are. So I'm just going to click on the MTL file here and click open and automatically the available bands list pops up and we've got the, um, the TM band 6 and the TM bands 1 through 5 and 7 there as well. Now if you look at the map information, for example, I'll just open this for TM band 6 here, you'll see that it gives you information about the projection zone and coordinate information here. Now one thing that I know is incorrect with this is it actually says that it's zone 52 north, whereas I know that this is an image of Darwin and so it should actually be zone 52 south. Now it does have the correct spatial information in terms of the latitude and longitude, um, but with the map coordinates, it's it's putting it as as a negative value here because it's thinking that it's a negative value for the northern hemisphere. So this is actually quite easy to change. Um, if you right click on the file here and go to Edit Header, um, it pops up a little window here, and it, this window also gives you a little bit more information about the file that's also contained in that metadata file as well. If we go to Edit Attributes and Map Info, um, all we need to do here is go to Change Projection. And where it says 52 north here, I'm going to change that to south and click OK. And you'll immediately see that that value for the northing changes. The easting stays exactly the same, but the northing is now a positive value. You can still see it over here as, um, as this negative value here and when it's looking at zone 52 north, but when it realizes that it's actually zone 52 south, it fixes that coordinate as well. We don't change anything else there. We've got the correct pixel sizes, etc. So we just click OK on that and OK once again and we see that that map information is, is carried over to the file there. Now the next thing that we want to do now that we've checked that some of that information is correct is just have a look at the images themselves. Now for, I'm going to um, open first of all the multispectral image and if you look at this it, within the file it lets you it, it says within the metadata information what the, the band numbers and the band centers are so this lets MV know what colors essentially the bands are representing so because it has this information already associated with it we can just right click on the file and go to load true color or load color infrared for that matter as well so if I directly go load true color and I'll bring the windows up here um, I can see that I've got my scroll image um, and we've got downtown Darwin and the image is in the correct location so that's the first thing that 
we'd check that to make sure that we are actually, we have actually um, downloaded the correct scene. And then we also want to have a look at the individual bands to make sure there's nothing, there's no anomalies within the bands that they are actually all there. So this combination looks okay for bands one, one, two, three. I could change that. Say if I want to have a look at um, a combination of, of the color infrared combination, I might go bands four, three, two, and load that as an RGB. And again, we color up, come up with that false color composite. Um, or just another way, if I want to have a look at um, change the band combinations. I've just right clicked there and go to Z profile spectrum um, and these blue, green and red stripes indicate the color guns that, we, that are getting used here. So if I change the red through to a, a mid infrared for example the green will uh, want to get displayed as near infrared and I'll leave the blue as green and if I right click there and say load new RGB combination I've just popped up with a false natural color there. So once I go through and I check all those bands and make sure that everything looks okay, um, I can also double click on the on the image and this brings up information about where the cursor is. Um, and this one I haven't actually changed that the projection there to make sure that that's the right zone. Um, so if you've already changed that in your multispectral image, that should come up as 52 south and the correct coordinates there. And they should change as you move over. And just make sure that they, those coordinates are what you would expect for the image that you've downloaded. The other thing you, that you'll probably notice with the image is on the on the east and west sides of the scene, you'll see some fraying effect. And we'll deal with that in in another demonstration about how to get rid of this and what effect that it has on your on your image data.